We are live. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name's Sean, and welcome to episode number seven. Getting close to ten episodes of this thing so far. Episode number seven of the Tarsus Tavern, your anthem community talk show and podcast. So for those of us joining for the first time, uh, what this is is a every Sunday uh, kind of collection of thoughts it's uh it's an open discussion for us to take our entire week of what we've done in the world of anthem take it all and then kind of decompress it on sunday thanks to everybody that's joining us here early maddie fresh uh staller what's going on guys how are you guys uh we are going to be joining right now my main man mr scotty mac mr mac how are you sir tonight Doing fantastic, Savage. How about you? I'm fantastic, sir. I just need to get this background music a little bit louder, I think. There we go. Perfect. All right, so for those of you joining us in the tavern the first time, the way we run this is you can see on the bottom left-hand corner there we have four main topics that we'll be discussing tonight. And then about uh, halfway through the podcast, uh, it's about first like hour and a half or so. We've been kind of running eh? about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. Uh, will be the talk show program, and then we open up to uh, open Q and A. That we do some gameplay, and then we'll get some uh, we'll get some jams in after that. So you can see our four topics tonight are our week in review, patch one point zero point four, at least in chests, and then a Mr. Scotty Mac uh, topic here that he found on Reddit, which is is the content path enough for Anthem? And I have all these uh, all these topics ready to rock and roll. But let's go through our week in Anthem first. Mr. Sky Mac, do you want to start? I started last week. You start this week. Yeah, sure. Uh, this week was great. I actually had a great week in Anthem. Nice. Um, yeah, I got, uh, I'd, I've come to the realization that my storm as it stands right now is about as good as it's going to get without some GG legendary loot. Yeah. Um, and what I've been finding is I've been kind of like struggling to find the place for storm in GM3. So GM one and two, it is just absolutely absurd. You are laying down the, you know, laying down all of these effects and you're spreading them around and nuking guys and it's great, right? It feels super good. Yeah. But <clears throat> once you start to get into like GM two strongholds and then GM three, like the damage really trails off. And, and I found that to be the case, especially now that the uh, scaling uh, went in with uh, 1.03, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm kind of like, I'm kind of at this point where in order for me to be effective and feel like I'm contributing to the group, I had to like really go through some time and evaluate my skills and try to rejigger a bunch of builds. And ultimately I've just decided that, you know, I know that there's going to be a ton of stuff that's coming in 1.04 with regards to tweaks and adjustments and all that sort of stuff. So I figure in the meantime, I spent the better half of this weekend and the last, I guess it was like from Friday forward, uh, really kind of tweak it up and gearing my uh, my ranger. Ranger, my, hey, my, I like that. Right? Which yeah. is like my third javelin that I'm really focusing on because my interceptor is like pretty GG. I'm, and yeah. Again, I'm just kind of waiting for them to, to fix a couple things in there. I find that my melee heal on, my heal on melee kill isn't working yeah. properly. Yeah, yeah. My, so, Maddie, uh, Maddie Fresh just says, ranger, ranger. Yeah, well, Maddie was playing yeah. with me. Maddie was playing with me last night, yeah. actually, with his ranger. And, yeah, yeah. And um, his ranger's gas as well, right? Yours yeah. as well. So it was so it was a lot of fun. And and I've sort of sort of tried to get the hang of the build. And I mean, like, it's not bad. I, 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 I'm I a believer. I, I you know, oh, yeah, he I is. Yeah, like, he is. The very end of the stream, I was like, you know what? You know, I could fuck with this. I, I, yeah. I, I could do this. This, this yeah, is something yeah, I could yeah. down with, right? Yeah, 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 and and and, nice. and and just wait until these. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more, obviously, in in the uh, the one point zero point four changes and update that's coming. Just wait till those buffs come in, and if they if they change around some of the components and some of the things on the ranger, I think having a very close to a, a GG ranger is going to be, you know, somewhere you're going to want to be, right? Just in terms of being very flexible. So it, yeah. it's it's nice that you come over to the uh, the ranger side here with us, Mister Scotty Mac. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm impressed, you know. It's yeah. it's got almost as much mobility as uh, as an interceptor if you play it right. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and it feels a lot more sturdy than the interceptor does. Yep. Yeah. So you know I I can I can get around with it, and you can play it a bunch of different ranges. Like it's totally flexible. 
and it can be whatever you want it to be based on what your drops are and yep so yep. yeah so that's that's what i've been doing this week man what about you i uh i actually switched it up too this week actually believe it or not Ooh, and uh i you have geared up a thick boy thick, didn't you thick boy yes yes during my uh my eight hour stream this week which went really really well thank you to everybody that came to hang out for that uh yeah i spent uh eight hours gearing up a thick boy and that was a completely new experience for me because i didn't realize how freaking amazing jumping and hulk smashing Oh, yeah. with, with a colossus is that that is that is a a, a great feeling a fantastic feeling uh to to prime everything around you freeze it all and then jump and then just fucking hulk smash hulk smash it's uh it was really awesome um colossus is a class that i'm going to be continuing working up into that you know that the air quotes you know the the gg the gg yeah. uh uh level so yeah you'll probably see more of that from me this week along with uh trying to get my legendary last argument grenade like mr matty fresh has that uh, that 200 percent gear charge one he has uh would be very very nice and something that i'm exactly looking for um also a um a recurring vengeance too in in legendary mm -hmm. would be super nice uh and those would be basically the last two pieces so i, th I think i'm like you with your storm yeah. it's basically just coming down to like very minuscule small percentage uh, increases are the only thing that are really going to take my ranger to the next level so yeah it's yeah. actually funny that you mentioned that skill specifically on the colossus the voltaic dome i think is the master word piece yeah but the like, dome yes yep it's actually one of the reasons why i felt like my storm started to underperform because yep. like compared to that ability like you just voltaic dome hulk smash i mean why bother with storm period yeah that's true yeah yeah and uh and, and secure uh josh he's the one that got me on to the uh the voltaic the voltaic dome and it's awesome now i don't know if i'm gonna play the colossus as defensively as, as he does um but it's it's awesome it's really good so nice yeah awesome good okay. well i'm glad you're enjoying it that's fantastic yeah yeah um okay so let's start with our first talk of the evening which i have up on our screen here which is anthem updates 1.0.4 so uh we had a live stream on march the 20th uh which was done by uh jesse anderson and chris smith who is the lead system designer for anthem uh which gave us updates to bringing six legendary missions stronghold vanity chests a huge amount of bug fixes javelin buffs across the board and a lot of component changes uh, if you haven't seen this yet i believe it is um up on the youtube anthem youtube and you can also watch it on twitch so now i think i think in addition to that two things worth mentioning yeah. uh, in addition to you know the the list of bug fixes that's as long as our arm yes um but there's some monster improvements in the forge which i'm yep. super excited no loading screen to get into forge anymore yeah super hot uh and then the other one which is really worth talking about and and i mean i'm sure we're gonna go through all of these but yep. worth mentioning initially is the field of view sliders have been added to the pc version only very Let me nice. tell you right now very that nice is something i am super excited about. yeah 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 so let's start at the top of the list here and start with one that we're actually going to be talking about in a little bit more depth here, but um, stronghold so, vanity chests. Let's let's save those till the end if we're going to segue with those sure. into the whole conversation. Back. All right, we can start with gear gear window. Now this plays all your components as well, giving you a better picture oh. of what the current build has. This is yeah, a good place yeah, to start. Yeah. So, so I like this. For, this is one of the forge improvements, right? Yep. So, so what they've added now, it's sort of like an incremental step towards getting our stat page, right? So what they've done now is they've added a screen just where normally you see all of your gear and your guns and, and everything sort of along the right side. Yep. You're now also going to get a list of all of your components that you're wearing. Uh, so that you can see sort of what you've got equipped uh, without needing to highlight the components tab. So, I mean, that's a small change. And I think that that's sort of, uh, if if that's a jump in the right direction towards a functioning stat page and view, man, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I like this. Yeah, I think I think they're going to test the waters with this. Um, I, I just wish they would put their, you know, their whole foot in the pool here instead of their toe and give us a system that you know gave us all of our percentages and all that kind of stuff on our on our gear um 
but I guess we're just good. We're going to, uh, in Bioware fashion, we're going to take it one step, one step at a time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and unfortunately those steps are never large. No, they ever are. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it seems to be drip, drip, drip with Bioware, uh, in terms of, uh, uh of this title. So, uh, salvaging from inside the vault, I yes. think is a, is a very, very nice one too. Yep. Yeah, agree. Yeah, this and is gonna... I think I think they said as well that extends to your uh, loot screen also at the end of a mission, which yes. is also exciting. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, consumables now be sorted by name and rarity. This is one step towards cleaning up the mess, <laughs> which is the consumable sigils tab in your mm -hmm. summary uh, sc summary screen as you prepare for your next expedition. Crafting multiple sigils at once has also been noted by the devs as a high demand feature, but it will eventually be implemented in one way or another with a later update. I really like this, um, yeah. that the ability to, to not sort out your consumables is super annoying. And I would like to be able to also take this a step further and make multiple consumables. So if I want to make yeah. 10, 10 gear sigils, I want to make 10 shield, 10 armor all at once. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to be able to do. Oh, you want to like not only multiples of this, of the one, but you want to make like click this, this, and this make 10 of each go. Uh, not necessarily no. Like 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 click individual like like armor make ten shield yeah. make ten you know uh, melee yeah, I make ten. I that would be that would be great because one of the things that's really really uh, kind of annoying is especially when you're streaming is you know getting to your consumables tab and be like oh okay I gotta make you know I gotta make sigils so I try and make like three or four that mm -hmm. way that we can always have the runs going in a, in a consistent uh, fashion when I'm when I'm streaming so being able to make just you know ten on the fly. You know, would be super, super, yeah. super, super What helpful. I'm really hoping, if I, what I'm really, really hoping for this and what this means, because this is, this is a little vague. As it stands right now, you can sort consumables you have made. Yes. By rarity. Yes, you can. Yeah. What you cannot sort at all are the consumable recipes. And that's what I want to be able to sort by. Yes, that rarity. one too. It's like, and especially when you want to use a new consumable, you're like, okay, where is this? Where is this? And you, and you sort through the list. You're like, okay, where's this one? And where's that one? Where's this one? Where's that one? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I'd love to. I'd love for that to be an extension of that. And hopefully yeah. that's sort of where they're headed with it. If they do, fantastic. And if not, well, it's just another ask on the pile. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So changing gears here, uh, talking about legendary missions. And I think this one here is absolutely Ooh. fantastic. So the legendary missions are landing with 1.0.4, only six of them. So, I mean, six of them is... I don't know. How you, I don't know. How, it's a start, but I think we are definitely going to need more. So each day of the week, one random mission will be available. There's no limit to how many times you can do it. However, just like with the contracts, once you do your own mission, you can join your friend and help others do yours. Um, well, not only that, but you can keep doing your own. Yes. Yes. Which is awesome. So this but it's is only the one that you're given for that day. Right. Right. So this is this is obviously a. And I've spoken about this on stream. This is a direct answer to trying to prevent uh, heart of rage to chest type of activities within the game, I think. Yep. Yeah. And I think that these legendary missions are designed to sort of be a bridge content between free play and stronghold. Yes. Like I, I believe they're still holding stronghold is that sort of gold medal standard for difficulty yep. within uh, a, a difficulty level. So if legendaries are sort of like halfway through, man, That'd be insane. And you can suddenly just jam these. You're guaranteed an apex creature at the end of the mission, whether it's like a legendary Ursix or a Titan or a Luminary or a Fury or something. Yep. And like those guys tend to drop monster loot. If you're running these missions on GM3, um, this is going to be should, nice. You should likely get some pretty sick, pretty sick chests at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, you mentioned it here before uh, a zoomed field of view. Which is coming for mm. PC players. This is nice. I love this. Love yeah. this. And it's neat too because they've kind of broken it up into five different areas. So whether you're, when you're on the ground, what is your field of view for that? When you're zoomed in on a weapon, what's your field of view for that? Yep. When you are in your pilot mode, which is out of your suit, what's your field of view for that? So that's going to impact uh, Tarsus, which will be huge. Um, you, what what you're doing in flight and what you're doing when you're swimming. So I think that's. Uh, being able to have those different field of views based on where you're at. Cause like sometimes when you're on the ground, you want a closer in field of view, but then when you're swimming, you want it like as far out as possible. And so you can see everything. And I just think having those choices is going to be sick. Yeah. 
Yep. Then we have uh, several performance tweaks. Um, the improved performance is part of each patch in the game. There in UK6 to see better effects like weather, uh, time of day, and so on, which I think is awesome because I love free play. It's one of my favorite, favorite aspects of the game. So if we're, if we're seeing improved performance on many aspects of the already beautiful world of Bastion, uh, that is something that I absolutely love. Um, then we have a large number of changes and tweaks that have been made to pretty much all the javelins. A few new universal components, which is exciting, uh, have been introduced. Uh, most of the changes are buffs with only one or two nerfs to certain abilities. Uh, Jesse could not name where exactly the nerfs are located, but from words of the host, it seems like this update will bring quite a bit of rebalancing with mostly making the javelins stronger and better. Hopefully, yeah. this means Ranger, 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 Ranger. <laughs> they, ranger so they ranger, mentioned ranger. a lot about, they talked a lot about Ranger. They said a lot of them are Ranger. Mm -hmm. Apparently, these patch notes, by the way, are 14 pages. It's a 14 page Word document. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, the, yeah, the things that we're talking about here are like are like the big, the big button topics. But yeah. this, this patch so, is expected well, to be quite big. But I think the most of that, what they said is the most of those pages are all of the little subtle tweaks, bumps, buffs, fixes, whatever that exist within the gear that yeah. we have. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the neat one is, um, you know, and that's why I was, I said earlier, like, I'm kind of waiting for this to hit to see how much that impacts storm. I think you're going to see some rebalancing and some changing of some components with regards to Ranger to try to bring something into a more uniform strategic, uh, deployment. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one that the, the, regarding the new stuff they're adding, um, universal components, we got a bunch of them last patch, right. But they were like, they were like the the heat, the shield, yeah. and the armor, and stuff like that. These yeah. ones are going to be all of the universal weapon. Components. Right, right. Which I think is much more exciting. I mean, the one the ones we have now, I, I would put very much into the, into the the meh category. I mean, I understand you have to have universal armor, universal, you know, this and that. But like, let's see some universal weapon stuff, and I think it's going to be a, a game changer for some builds. Yeah. Well, especially for somebody like Ranger, right? So, yeah. so they talked about the one they talked about was called acid slugs. So oh. it's a shot, it's a shotgun in script. It's a shotgun component. Basically, yeah. if seven shotgun pellets hit an enemy while they are, sh while you're shooting it, yeah. uh, it applies acid. So, and, yeah. and I love that. And I, and I love that because we need, we need, we need, um, passive ways to increase the dps of the ranger and i talked about this a little bit on my streams too is that i think having different types of ammunition in the guns for ranger could be a great way of doing that also we talked about like uh reloading while sprinting uh having a quicker reload on the ranger just passively uh, i think yeah. those are all these are all things that you could see to just very slowly increase the dps of the ranger and make it a little bit more boost to the ground uh soldier type yeah, totally yeah. agree. I'm my so my question about these is going to be is going to be interesting. So, um, for example, the acid slugs. So when they do apply the acid effect, does that mean they're going to prime them with acid, or are they just going to apply acid? So my gut tells me it's the it's the latter and not the former. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll definitely have to see what direction they they want to take it. Mm -hmm. um, the issues with quick play missions have also been uh, resolved, so they say, or at least at least most of them. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, because quick quick play has just been uh, a disaster so far uh, in terms of trying to get into uh, uh, quick play missions. Um, the cooldown timer reverts back to a full thirty seconds. This bug has also been fixed and should no longer happen. Yeah. What else do we have here? Uh, one of the javelin most javelin thrusters have been improved by twenty percent, yep. and overheat time has been reduced by twenty percent. So that's sick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interceptors can hold down the melee button instead of mashing it. So that's Beautiful. super good for those carpal tunnel interceptors. Yeah. 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 Uh, another one here that I think is really great is uh, waypoints in free play. I think is going to be is going to be fantastic too. Um, now I think there was a few there, there is a few waypoints in free play, isn't there already? So yeah, okay. So what they're talking about here is when you have um, like a like a mission, a, um, an event that, yep. that pops up, world event. That's what they're called. Um, and you look at your map, you'll see the area that is actually in on your map. Yep. Now this did occur um, during. Uh, <laughs> sorry, this did occur during the um, event where we had. Uh, the bestiaries, right? So yes. we were, we had to like basically save or protect the, um, uh, why well, can't I remember? I'm brain deading the, uh, 
the Arcanists. Sorry, I want to say alchemists for some reason. You have to alchemists. protect the Arcanists. Yeah, you have to protect the Arcanists while they're like researching bo beast bodies or whatever, and then the brutes yes. come, and then whatever. Yeah. So like those when they first popped started popping up, they were on the map already. Yeah. So it was pretty clear that that was the direction that they were going to head, but um it's it's a step in the right direction making us kind of use that map i think that's really good yep yep um random disconnects with a failed uh, attempt to load pilot data this is one that i think everybody in the game has uh has experienced i mean it is it is just it is just silly that this one is still happening i mean i, I thought they would have fixed this one long ago but here we are still talking about it and i tell you after this patch if they specifically say that this is this is gone and it's not I am going to lose the rest of the hair on my head that I don't have. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, man, if, if this if this pilot data thing is not dealt with, who boy, it's going to be hard for me to say nice things. Um, the luck discussion is still going on, uh, which yeah. I, I think I'm of the opinion that I, I want luck gone from the game. I, I want yeah, it gone. I could get behind that. It, it seemed pretty apparent that Chris wants it gone too. Yeah, I think so. Like he, he gave a pretty clear impression that yeah, there are conversations that are being had about that. And he Yeah, the smile Yeah, I mean let's be let's be let's be honest here. Other other games have started with, you know, Diablo three is the biggest one. You know, we're talking about Magic Find and when they got rid of Magic Find out of the game, it really, really helped things so so much. Um sure. they also I, had to I, tweak the drop rates out the wazoo in order to make it work though. Yeah, which which is which is fine. I think I think it's a good payoff instead of us, you know, trying to figure out is ninety percent a cutoff is two fifty better. I mean, us trying to you know figure out what exactly like what loop percentage we need to be running. Right? There's just mm -hmm. there's just not been enough clarity on this whole thing. And if they're not going to be clear about it, then they just need to get rid of it. They just yep. need to get rid of it. As far as I'm concerned. Um, I agree. What else did we miss here? Anything we missed? Did fog we... fog walls and so strongholds as a rule. So fog walls and yes. strongholds have been gone. So now you can you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And also with strongholds now, you can no longer be match made into a stronghold after two minutes have elapsed. So quick play is the exception. Okay. Yep. So, but if you want to pick a stronghold and say play it, yep. if it's within two minutes of it of it starting, you you can join it. If you're like if they start with three and you're one, then you can join it. But after that, no, no luck new instance so i yeah. think that is going to be yes yeah here's yeah, red stop here fog fog walls yeah and the strongholds queuing yet yeah, we we touched on that um and then much... also now that you kill the boss yeah this is the other one from a loot perspective so yes they've they've now basically uncoded yep the uh the guaranteed drops so yes on a gm2 stronghold you're still going to get two masterworks and then a bunch of stuff Previously, that bunch of stuff was coded to purple. That bunch of stuff now is anything. Anything, yeah. So, I was reading here. Yeah, yeah. This means that you get a can get a edition. chance at a legendary from the final boss of each stronghold. So this instantly makes each boss, including our friend the monitor that we've been avoiding for weeks. I mean, he must be wondering where you know why we aren't calling anymore. Um, <laughs> the legendary boss of each stronghold will now have the chance to drop a legendary. So I think this is going to uh, significantly increase the amount of full completes on stuff such as the Heart of Rage. Yeah. And yeah. Sean, there's, there's going to be another really, really, really good reason to kill stronghold bosses for the next two weeks. Why don't we talk about it? Absolutely, that is Elysian Chests. Now, there is some good and some bad to this. So, let's start about, let's talk about the good. So, these are cosmetic chests that we are going to get at the, each, at the end of each Stronghold boss. Um, so, things that can be usually earned by uh, currency or IRL cash with a select few being out for challenge rewards. Uh, but... There's also a little bit of downsides with this too. We've learned that there's not going to be armor in these. So let's break this down a little bit. Okay, so here's here's how this works. You complete a daily challenge. Yep. Okay, when you log in to check your daily challenges, there'll be one and it'll have a little key on it, okay? When you complete that challenge for yourself, you will earn a key, okay? You go through a stronghold, you beat a boss. And basically everyone in the squad receives a reward that comes out of a chest. So if all four people have their keys and run the stronghold and then they all open up their own chest, yep. all four players 
we'll get 16 uh, rewards. Right? That's awesome. This is amazing. Those yeah, rewards good. are things like coin, are things like embers, they're things like um, enter, you know, uh, entrance emotes, uh, victory emotes, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, when it, yeah, when victory, it came out, yeah, victory poses, landing poses, decals, vinyls, and bundles of crafting supplies. Yeah, so like when yeah. it came out, everyone was like, cosmetic chest, sweet, this is where sweet. the armor awesome. is. Awesome. And then Ben's like, yeah, no, uh, no armor. Yeah. Now, good news is, guys, you're not going to get doubles. There's no way you're going to get doubles when you open these chests. So that is at least a breath of fresh air. Yeah, but the, pro the problem more. is, is that, and a lot of people are mad because they were not clear about this, and then kind of waited almost until the last minute, because we are expecting this patch, hopefully on Tuesday this week, around there. Well, that there, they, is, they, there is maintenance on Tuesday. Yeah, there's a maintenance on Tuesday, so we're expecting this patch on Tuesday, that they were not transparent with the fact that this would not contain armor sets. Now... Thinking about this from a business perspective, though, we have to understand that they have to keep something behind the paywall. So this is obviously, and again, we're assuming here, but my opinion is that this is an EA kind of, this is this is an EA decision. And I listen, I've been telling people to not worry about that EA is the publisher of this game, but this, this feels, this feels like a very EA influenced decision. So I'm not sure I agree with that. Okay. And 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 the reason for the and and if we go to uh, the Savage Squad Discord, we check the Tarsus Tavern link. We notice that Centigrade made actually a really good point in there, and I think that that really echoes through towards this point that you're trying to make here. Uh, so, Bioware's coin system. His point says, "Yeah, I'm here too." Yeah. Anthem Store Hour. The so the Anthem Store offers very little in terms of inventory at any given time. That's true. Like it's really only changing like twice a week, right? Yeah, twice a week. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's and yeah, there's very there's little there. So it's... many ways in a week to earn tons and tons of coins. Yeah, and I mean, like you can buy almost everything that comes out just with the coins that you make by playing the game. Yeah, on, on the resets. Yeah, which yeah. loses all incentive to even spend money to buy the bits or whatever the heck they're calling them to actually sure. spend yeah, real world money on buying your 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 transmogs. The real way to get people to spend money and open up their wallets is to flood them with options so that if they want them all, they have to pay for them all. Yes, so that is true. I, I, that's very anti-EA, in my opinion. Really? Really? Because you don't think um, you don't think EA goes, okay, you know, we can put whatever you want in the chest, but we need just a, we just a little, you know, a little something. Uh, as no, the I, chat says, I, 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 I think... agree with Scotty the Banner by an oops system. The misleading comments that after weeks and weeks, this then suddenly says he must well, understood the question. Ben, Ben's barely bonus to me. Right. Ben, I, and Ben's, I and Ben's I agree. Yeah, the whole the whole thing the whole thing does feel bogus for sure. Let let's start there. It does. So I Ben hasn't been in the office for two weeks, right? He's not really back. He didn't get back until late this week. But, so is it entirely possible that somebody said something the wrong way, and Ben's like, "No, guys, that's not right." Maybe. But again, what yeah. I, to, to reiterate my anti-EA statement, wouldn't the EA statement be put everything out so that they spend the money is what I'm getting at, right? It feels like because they're dripping it, it's almost like they don't want us to spend the money. Almost yeah. like maybe subconsciously they don't feel like they deserve the money. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Maybe maybe just Jodat says, I'll never understand why people care so much about cosmetic stuff. I want good gameplay, then new comment content. Well um there's this yeah, game right. called there's there's this game called call of duty that made <laughs> cosmetic items extremely popular gun skins mm -hmm. that kind of thing uh counter-strike 2 is also a uh a very very early um uh you know, game that that did that did this and made it it made it popular. Yeah, uh, yeah, Fortnite too. Fortnite, right, Fortnite right. But if we're, if we're if we're starting, if we're if we're talking about kind of the beginning games that kind of made this this cosmetic trend popular, I think we have to look at Call of Duty and Counter Strike. Right. I mean, th there's a whole um, ecosystem for Counter Strike knife skins and gun skins, and people make a lot of money on Steam selling these types of items. So so here's the issue that I have with this whole Well, yes, and, and people, actually you know, here's, okay, here's sorry. why people are focusing on cosmetics though. Right, this right. Is the thing, right? It's because we know 
we've seen the assets exist. All of That's the true. assets exist in their back end. They simply need to just push a button. Right. The problem is, is that the same cannot be said for new content. Right, right. So they're so they're dripping, they're dripping everything except for content. And sorry, just to pull some stuff out of the out of the chat here. Uh, Kexenar says it started with Team Fortress Two hats. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Active Lurker Life says maybe they are short on actual content. They're afraid to oversaturate uh, such a new release with content. Yeah, be it paid or not. I mean, okay. But again, what, what, uh, just reiterating what, what Scotty said here is they're they're dripping everything except for new content, and it's weird. Do you not think? Oh, I think they're they're dripping it anyway. Like so, okay. If I'm really, really, really breaking down the timelines here, right? So, uh, Bioware is a week behind their release schedule. Yeah, yeah. game is only a month old. Show. That's right. Yeah, that's but true. they did they did come strong and they said, "Here's our release schedule. Here's what we're looking at." There's a ton of stuff that was slated for March release that aren't out. And yeah, I think they... what happened was is they came out with a game. And within the first week realized holy crap we weren't ready for this yeah yeah holy and shit there is a whole fucking bunch of problems that yeah, we didn't and, catch in this game and then, and then you have you know and the... they've spent a week in damage control yep and yep. now they're trying to catch up on the roadmap absolutely and so that's why we're not seeing that's why we haven't seen the outlaw outrage event that's why we haven't seen the new outlaw stronghold the sunken or whatever it's why we haven't seen like all of these things which are supposed to happen this month we are only now getting Elysian caches. We're only now getting phase one legendary missions, right? Yep. I think that I think that that has a lot to do with it. Wait, Scotty, wait, time out. Ooh, Mr. Uh, Secure. Uh, All right, I, Secure. I get, it. I'm get, waiting. Get, it's okay. Outdid the outlaw. I did see the outlaw outrage event? Uh, Joda says also Mr. Scotty Mac got three legendaries about half. Okay. All right, right, right. This is not this is not loot. This is not loot. Uh, show off time and the problem is the event is out the event is out oh it's just but more but, but, they, but did they say anything about it do people know that the event no, is out like and that's the thing right how is there not go to this area for more outlaw spawns yeah on your loading screen right yeah like if, if that's really what it is oof. yeah Yeesh. yeah active lurk life says but this comes back to the question of did ea push early release for anthem when clearly it wasn't exactly uh, wasn't ready. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Anthem was not ready to be released, folks. Let's let's you know we're we're big we're big proponents of this game. We're positive uh, proponents of this game. But listen, let, let's not uh, beat around the bush here. Anthem was not ready to be released. No, it's in the news when you log in. Okay, so so it's actually live. Okay, so they haven't oh. done a great job of saying that it is actually live so no. I mean, get, but I mean, getting back to the the Elysian caches, um, I think this community has a lot of right to be like no armor huh like like i think people have a right to be upset and i've seen some comments on reddit and on twitter too that this might be the final straw for some players if bioware is going to continue to have these you know quote unquote oops oops moments right i mean when are we going to get to a point where bioware is going to say something and then it's actually going to be exactly what they say it is we're, we're seeing too many uh oops moments and when it comes to something like cosmetics and and the loot in a looter shooter you cannot continue to have oops modes like this so they they're continually addressing loot right they're continually saying hey we're working on it we're getting there etc 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 we yep. don't know what these legendary missions are actually going to give us it might be that's fair uh, might be crap it might be amazing who knows right yeah i think that the way that they're they have addressed loot is a step in the right direction, but not nearly good enough. Um, loot feels instanced um, in the fact yep, that like, it sure does. when you spawn in, it's like you're getting a, a virtual seed assigned to you when you spawn yep. into a mission and you either get it or you don't. Um, or you get like, maybe there's a, a scale of one to five and five is all the drops and yep. one is all the blues. Um, and you basically get randomly assigned. So, you know, if you don't see a master work in GM3, in 20 minutes get out and get back in yeah i was just gonna i was just gonna kind of read my mind there i mean we're, we're at the point that we put you know 200 hours almost in this game and we know when we started gm3 free play 
how how that's going to go about after 20 minutes right and we're usually nine times out of ten if we're not getting loot drops we're instantly reinstancing you know restarting that gm3 free play so yeah. and so, and like so we, the we just know missions might the legendary missions if they might solve some of that problem they're easy they're quicker you don't have to wait so long to figure out what's going on like yeah. my hope is that that's going to help address a lot of that and then obviously being able to run strongholds again will be also of value for us right because the strongholds have the highest the highest loot yeah. um so that's so that's really important um now the other side to this though is uh, to address the oops situations right yeah so we haven't had a full cohesive team together since week one of launch which to me which to me is nutty because with all the problems and the feedback and the outrage of, of the community of this game you would think it would be it would be balls to the wall you know get the team together and sure, let's get sure. this thing fucking fixed sure and and you know what behind the scenes that might be happening but in the, the reality is as far as community goes like um because i'm pretty sure the jesse's on vacation this yeah, week Je yeah jesse yeah uh my and gamble my gamble was off for a long time then right. ben, ben went off for a long time yeah and, yeah and now jesse anderson's gone too yeah so uh you know it's kind of tough for us as a community to try to you know hold any single person accountable for anything because i don't think there's really anybody at the helm right now um right. there's obviously stuff going on in the background stuff's being fixed stuff's being worked on stuff's being addressed we get it right yeah otherwise you wouldn't have 14 pages of patch notes that's true um I, you know we know qa is uh, i think qa is going overtime right now just trying to find all of this crap, right? They have to be. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you we, know. We, we, you know, wink, wink. We kind of know that they are already. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, like, you know, th there are people that are killing themselves for this game right now. Um, yeah. And so I have a problem with people that, you know, are in the situation where they're like, hey, uh, you know, this is the last straw for me. I'm frustrated. I'm upset guys, the game's a week old, or the game's a month old, settle down. We haven't even been through the first full phase of content. Yeah, like, yeah, but I mean, I mean, talk I mean, talk to me when Cataclysm is over. Yeah, and if when yeah. Cataclysm is over, you still feel this way. God love you. Have a nice life. Like, yeah. I, there's no other way to look at it, right? Yeah, so yeah, They're yeah, behind. they're trying to get caught up. Yeah, they had all these vacations planned because they expected something perfect. I Honestly, I'm I'm into this at least until the end of Cataclysm to see what's going on because I truly believe they have something monstrously big planned and they've been teasing this big, big, big thing. And if Cataclysms are going to be as insane as we expect, they may just be the reason to play the game. But 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 the problem is, though, Scott, is is there going to be enough of a community, enough of a player base that it's really even going to matter? I mean, I mean, they're going to have to be so big that you're literally going to have to bring people back to the game. So I, I, cause it, it feels like we're, we're, we're slowly starting to, again, using the drip, the drip, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're losing players. We're losing players. And, and is it going to be too little too late? Because we already know that they're behind, right? Yeah. As, as we just said, so, if if all these timelines keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, is the current player base that's still here that's willing to wait? How long are are they going to be willing to wait? Because a bunch of the people that are playing the game are already gone, so mm -hmm. that small segment that's still here, how long are they going to be patient for? Yeah, there definitely have, has been a marked you know disintegration of the player base. Like yeah. there's oh, no question. For sure. Division two, Division two has eaten this game's lunch. Yeah. Um, they're riding high on the sales. They yep. sold a metric crap ton of Anthem, by the way, a metric crap ton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, top, top game February and top game, uh, of the year so far in terms of sales. Second highest game from Bioware period. Yeah. Think about that. Right. Insane figures. And that doesn't count things like, uh, EA, uh, EA premiere. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, jo they Josh. Aren't they've got enough money they're not going anywhere yeah right? josh says yeah the problem the problem is cataclysm is two months away if there are no delays and we've seen that consistently there seems to be delays so are we two and a half months away are we three and a half months away i mean like even unleashing unleashing caches i mean what happens with with these with these caches 
if there's a, even a delay on these. Um, I saw a normally positive YouTuber say he had to give up making content. He did it all, uh, all already, and he has nothing more to make. Yeah, yeah, you know, I and I can see that a lot of people are probably, you know, even like on the uh, on the freelancers uh, chat too, mm-hmm. uh, which is another another podcast. Um, they're they're stopping their freelancer chat halfway through, and talking about other games. Mm-hmm. I think I think we're one of the, the only talk shows and podcasts likely in this directory that take an uh, you know an hour and a half to hour and three quarters talking about topics in this game. <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you, yeah, yeah. So so I mean we can talk. So the whole crafting schedule, Active Lurker, um, great tag by the way. Uh, so the whole crafting schedule I think is is you know, ass backwards and could literally take up another hour and a half just on that. Okay. But suffice it to say that there are a lot of balance issues with regards to content, timing, objectives, and rewards. Yes. And rewards does include loot. Okay. There are a lot of issues in there that I think um, were old ideas that maybe just carried themselves through to the final presentation of the game. But I think that there was a lot of underestimation on behalf of Bioware with regards to how much content they actually had versus how quickly people are going to go through it and how much people are going to love playing this game. Yep. Yeah. Cause people nowadays eat, eat through content. Like it's dinner, like it's dinner. Um, Matt Fresh says there really isn't much uh, else to make. Uh, what's fun about here is rolling in viewers and followers that want to get. Okay, yeah, yeah, and you know what? That's been that's been really the backbone of what we've done for the last two weeks is is we've made it about the community, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Secure so says also caches were supposed to be March content. Aha, and um, it might be out March twenty seventh. That isn't March anymore. Yeah, yeah, and it's again, almost so not that, March. That's, and that's and again, we if if we see another if we see a delay on this. God well, damn! Like, like, what's gonna happen to guilds? Guilds so are supposed to be end of April. <laughs> well, they were supposed to be in April. Are they right. supposed to be end of April? Who knows, right? So, so yeah. And if they add a stronghold, it'll it'll be like a week or two. You know, who knows, right? There's stuff going on. What? You know what? Honestly, people that are still playing this game are playing the game because they love it. Yeah. And that's that's what it comes down to, right? Yep. yep. And, um, that, yeah. and if 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 you're that person, you're listening to this show. Yeah. And if you're not that person, then you found this place by accident, and I'm sorry. But uh put this back on in three months. Which kind of segues us into kind of our discussion even already now, which is the Bioware uh roadmap and, and content releases and Mr. Scotty Max sent me this great Reddit post today that is titled Bioware, your roadmap is not going to keep players playing. Um too long didn't read the new events are not new which is more of the same the sunken will not have new enemies so it'll just be the same in a new setting the elation chests make us feel lied to graphics and armor are the only fun part of customization cataclysms will only bring more of the same guilds are practically useless without a chat mastery needs to hit the jackpot um a lot of this is unfortunately true <laughs> And again, yeah. as as much as I preach positivity in my streams within this community, this guy here, Face ninety three, is not wrong. Yeah, that's why I sent it to you. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It's like, wow. Yes, yeah. This is this is this is almost very spot on. Again, the the Elysian chest thing is just a mess. Um, guilds again. Yes, before we have guilds, we need to see text chat because there's going to be no point in having guilds if we cannot talk to our fellow guild members this is this is this is this is rvg mmo 101 right like maybe there'll be bulletin boards instead you know where you can like post messages and stuff for your guild well why why not just send a fucking carrier pigeon then sir well i mean you may not be wrong (laughs) but i'm just saying but like maybe in game there'll be you know how there's like boards right where you can walk up to a board or a map or something yeah but i mean Come on, we're fucking 2019. That would be so lame. We need a text chat in this game. We need a guild chat in this game. We need a general chat in this game. We need it. I agree. It. Need I agree. Yep, and mastery I agree. needs to hit the jack. But what does he say about mastery in here? Let me see. Mastery progression. I have no so idea. Mastery what you... progression. Yeah. So so yeah. the thing. Yeah. Um, Talent tree. Players, ta- players yeah. won't be satisfied unless it's one of the following. 
yeah. talent tree to increase and tweak your gear or scrapping all secondary inscriptions and letting us choose freely to improve these now yeah. you played borderlands yeah right? I, I yeah i played borderlands for two months and this was this was very very nice the secondary inscriptions and letting us choose freely to improve them uh in in borderlands was super super nice and i think would be something huge within this game mm -hmm. i think okay. that there's a term that's thrown around a lot uh when it's when it's regards to loot and i think that it's the concept of player agency right yeah and and i think that if you want to make things and i mean this is a dead horse that's been beaten and beaten and beaten right but yeah. the reality is is that you have two choices you either shower your people with loot so that eventually they'll find the thing that they need or you have to provide them with some level of agency and control over manipulating the loot that they do receive so that they can get the thing that they want right, right? like right. That, that's yeah. ultimately what it comes down to yeah yeah so it's, it, yeah it's basically it's, it, it's player player agency versus rng and this is always the the back and forth tug and war yeah yeah so anyways i uh we do i did link the post here in the in the chat so if you guys are awesome. on Twitch, you'll be able to see yeah that. yeah it, it but, is a good uh, one and there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of other good stuff there on the uh, on the anthem reddit here today too um the, the anthem reddit is starting to feel a, a bit better a bit more positivity i mean there's still your you know ragey posts about you know, my legendaries are gone. You know, what else here? Blue embers instead of gear. Somebody finds the first masterwork. That's freaking awesome. Uh, I played this... 90 hours and I've got one legendary. Right, right, right. I, oh. I did it. I did it. I did an hour of GM2. The loot sucks. <laughs> I'm still on that one because because I think it's funny. Um, yeah. All right. So let's take a look within the Savage Squad Discord. And see if there's anything else that we can talk about. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know some people did have some discussion topics that they wanted to talk about today. So we are in there now. Tarsus Tavern. Um, Rick so Jackson. I like, so I really like a couple of Rick's points here. Okay. Yep. Um, so I really, really like. So I think we've talked about. We've talked a little bit about point one. Or, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, and the, that's given that Anthem is following the game as a service game as a service model, what yes. level of which types of content do you think are necessary to maintain a solid population? So how often do we need new items? How often do we need new strongholds? How often, you know, and how much of it do we need? Yes. So, yes. so if I'm, if I'm going to address that, I think that from a new gear standpoint, they've been doing fairly well by, you know, each patch they've released more masterwork components i think that's great yeah um i think every month we should be getting like another one more gear piece for each one of the slots on each javelin yeah that'd be nice yeah i agree with that i, I can get down with that for sure right and yeah. then or or maybe even like it maybe if that's a phase like after the phase three thing is fine yeah um but then the other piece is strongholds. They used to be releasing one of those, like a new one of those every month to two months. What do you think about strongholds? How often do you want a new stronghold? I, I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, I think we need strongholds pretty much by, by monthly. I think, I think by monthly would be okay for me for strong, for strongholds. Um, and then you have the, the in-between missions. Mm -hmm. And it, now again, it depends on how many strongholds you get. So if we're talking bi-monthly, you would need a, at least three to four new ones, I think. So if we assume we're getting a Cataclysm every three months. Yep. So what if we have like new gear, new gear month. So assume this is three three month windows, new yep. gear month one, new stronghold month two, Cataclysm yep. month three, rinse repeat. I mean, I, yeah, I could, I could get down with that. Yeah, yeah. You think that's enough? If the vol, if the like the volume of gear is good I, enough. If I mean, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, as good as we think. Like, right. I mean, I mean, the problem, the problem is, and this is all hypotheticals, right? Is is it ever going to be enough? Is it ever going to be enough for that that hyper, you know, that hyper, you know, plow through content, power type of gamer? Uh, is it ever going to be enough? And and I think this is the problem that Bioware is in, being such a new developer to this type of of game and this and this genre is that with everything that's happened is it ever going to be enough 
It's a really good question. Right. So we can, we can hypothetically, you know, we can, we can, you know, hypothetically say, okay, this month, this much, this much, and this much within this amount of time. Um, but I, I just don't know more diversity with weapons. Yeah. Big deal for sure. Yep. That, that's something that's super important too. But for me right now it is, it's, it's, it's content for sure. Um, I would so like to for content. Is it just clarify that for me real quick? Cause right. I, is that things to do or is it things to have? Like, I, it, it has to be a very balanced mix of both. Again, I don't. I don't think they do enough in the world. I don't think they do enough in free play. Free play, I think, is one of the best aspects of this game. So, you could have like epic, epic missions within free play. I saw a post on Reddit. And somebody was like, "What if you were flying through free play?" Yep. And all of a sudden. The sky went black. Yep. And you turned around and looked. Yep. And this was chasing you. And it's like yep. this huge ass friggin' wyvern. Like and, enormous. And it was like, ah, And we amazing. talked about this during one of our one of my streams, and we were going back and forth. It's like, what if you what if, you know, again the sky turns black and a huge freaking armored Ursix with like six scars riding on top of it appears? Yeah. Or like what if like a wyvern pack again heavily armored or like like with like freaking like huge like freaking the rock muscles on them and there's four dominion running on them they come at you like a pack or like what if there's a, a pack of titans or like like um a larger titan with like three little ones like almost like a mother and you know kids type of situation like like a mom like a mama bear a mama bear and and a, and a, a little bit little bears right but we're talking about titans um i want to see more stuff within free play to do that's for sure strongholds 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 are good but i think this game really shines in free play because i have been having the most fun i've ever had in this game when they increased the loot and we started doing gm3 runs this yep. is the most fun i've had yep yeah, I a big deal's got it here too. You should be able to run into trouble like in the re, like the real world in free play. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. like when you're flying around free play, you you it's just it's just la di da la di da la di da. Oh, um, world mission over here. La di da la di da. More alive. Yeah, I exactly. Think really the summary, a right? lot alive, but dangerous, right? Yeah. Dangerous. We we know that these these you know huge beasts and titans and stuff are around and like there's been times when even like you you myself and jordan have played and you're like you know what an ursix would be awesome right now or like mm -hmm. a titan would be awesome right now like you fly around the world and it's just not it doesn't feel dangerous enough no it's it doesn't feel full enough right now and i think yeah. that that's a big part of it um and what they are filling it with is not is not dangerous absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and even like strider says like or sorry active says uh striders yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like the Dominion get together and they get their friggin' toolboxes out and they fix one of those huge Striders. So you're flying around in free play. Holy shit! All of a sudden, a Strider shoots at you like they they, they look like Atats from mm -hmm. Star Wars, right? All yeah. of a sudden, these these fucking red laser beams come, boom, 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 like right at you. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff yeah. that we need. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, and I think that it's funny because they're like, oh, well, we buff the loot drops on Titans and Ursix and this and that. Come on right? now. I'm still, I'm, getting, like, I'm still getting tons of double purples well, on those. They buffed them on the legendary versions, but when was exactly. the last time you saw a legendary version of any of those outside of a GM3 contract? That too. That too. Yeah, you're fighting, you're fighting regular ones in free play, and nine times out of ten, it's double purple or purple yeah. and a blue or double blues. So... I'm, you know, uh, that uh, that's a feel bad moment. Yeah. I never okay. I have given up almost completely given up on trying to crunch this game's numbers because I don't think the game knows the game's numbers. Yeah, yeah, and we are we're going okay. through uh, centigrade here uh, about Reddit number crunchers and their role in exposing the bad math in the code of Anthem. Mhm. Mm I have just given up and I am now literally operating on a feel. Yeah. If an instance makes me feel bad, if a build makes me feel bad, I will change it. If an activity makes me feel bad, I will change it and, and do something else. And yeah. I think that that has been like the fact that I'm there 
I can't even power game anymore. Yeah, like, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not a good feeling. No, no. Like, like the fact that we get twenty minutes into a free play, and we're like, "Yep, this is a bad instance." It it feels bad. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, I want I want my feel good back. So, so I think I think like if I were to if I were to say, by the way, PSA for those of you, when the patch note release comes out that night, uh, you should play for sure. A Log shit ton, play. yes, yes, because, because we might we might have another strategically we oops. might have another blip in the radar. Another another oops. Yeah. another oops situation and, and the rain that the, the yellow rain might come down as as Mr. Zakir likes to say. Um luck, all the current mysteries and theories and personal experiences that again we've we've had um our own experiences here. We did both pre uh loot drop increases, um GM two part of rage runs at least 70 or 80 of them and that whole that we had 76 data points 76 yeah and that whole thing went kaput uh when they increased the loot drops so um and even during that we had we we really had no clue we really had no clue i don't think i mean um and again we we, we've touched on i think i think luck is something that just needs to be completely removed from this game um Diablo three did really well with it. That's that's always my like my go back too. So mm-hmm. I don't think luck yeah. has anything to do with legendaries, and this is I think one yeah, of and I don't think so either. Luck, but which is the part luck, that sucks. Luck directly has an impact on masterworks and the number of masterworks that you do drop. That mm-hmm. we did prove, and that is true. So if all you're looking for is masterworks, yeah, jack that luck up to about two hundred five. You'll you're be good. fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, two hundred five on gear, so we're clear. But if you're still hunting for legendaries. It literally doesn't matter how much you've got. It almost feels like you get more legendaries the higher your power score is. And I know it has nothing to do with it, right? Like they, they have categorically said it has nothing to do with it. But yeah, anecdotally, yeah, totally. I that don't know. It doesn't feel to be the case. Like, like I almost wonder, they talk about how different loot is available. Like one of the things that the loot scales on is your pilot level. Okay. So when you hit 30, in theory, you should just be in whatever loot tr- loot bucket. Yeah. But the reality is, is that a level 30 fresh and a level 30 778 javelin are two very different things, and they absolutely. feel different in the drops. Yep, absolutely do. Yep. Yep, completely agree. Um, yeah. Anyways. Pulling stuff from the chat here, um, I think gear value should be based on difficulty. Okay, that's interesting. You mean, you mean you mean difficult difficulty should be based on gear value? Yeah, I think I think the other way around, right? Yeah. So I agree. There should absolutely be some gates. And and by the way, I'll go a crap about free play, but in strongholds. Like if you want to get into a GM three stronghold, you should have to have a minimum of six hundred and fifty gear score. Yep. Period. Full stop. And right? again, and again, we go we go back to Diablo three, right? Yep. Your your torment levels. You can't do certain torment until you're a certain you know or until you've completed a specific level of greater rift right right yeah and and i think that's important you can do whatever you want in free play if you've got potatoes that are trying to leech in free play it is what it is right but in strongholds you should absolutely have a gear gate which is really absolutely yeah yeah strongholds need to be the serious the serious content for sure um and loot should only drop for your current power level so okay. I, so what I would like, so that's dangerous. I was gonna say, like, like I'm kind of, like, kind of like, I'm kind of like, mm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm not, what, mm, I don't know. I think, I think there should be, there should be like a slant. Yeah. There should be like, like a different loot pool, once you hit like different categories. Yeah. When you are a, when you are an an epic, you should have a specific loot pool. When you are a masterwork, you should have a specific loot pool. When you are a legendary you should have a different loot pool. And I think that once you break those out, that'll have a better impact on the sense of progression in the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh says Destiny 2, Destiny 2 kind of does that. It averages your power level, and you always uh, drop something equal or better until uh, you hit max. Yeah. Which Sounds is good. really good. So Sounds that's really good. good. Um, then the next question is, do we do we... Uh, yeah, yeah. So average, like average drop, yeah, six twenty. Your average drop, yeah, light level uh, will be six twenty one. Yeah. Yep. But like that's really tough to implement. 
Like, so what, what does that say? Like, you get no drops unless they're Masterworks? If you're all Masterwork, you get no drops unless they're Masterworks? Yeah, that doesn't work, right? Yeah, yeah, for this game, yeah, for this game, it's yeah, yeah it's a little bit different. I would love to see something like that, but I think that the yeah. only way to do it is with, like, loot pools of different scaling. That's all. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Acta, that's Acta says, uh, so if I'm a Masterwork Ranger, rares are useless, therefore I'm seeking Masterwork drops to make a build. No, exactly. That yep. makes sense, yep. right? But the reality is, is that you still should have a chance within a spectrum to drop it. Now, you know, you might get a 1% chance to drop a legendary. You might have a, um, you might have like a 20% a, a chance to drop a masterwork where it should be something like 30% chance to drop a masterwork, 5% chance to drop a legendary. When you get up to the top, top echelon where you're running all legendaries, why am I not getting a 15% legendary drop rate? And Big Deal says, nah, Lady Luck is a bitch. We should respect that. I mean, we, we, we can we can respect it to a certain point, but I think Big Deal, the problem is that um, people are trying to understand, and, and, and I know she's a bitch, but we need to have some sort of understanding how things drop and how... You know if they're going to continue on with the luck percentages and, and luck as a as a process in the game they need to be much more clear on exactly how it works right because what's happening is everybody is is it's like this everybody's like and then a hard wall we're not talking about like a, a sl like a slight kind of like incline curve where it's like this like say like in destiny 2 like like josh was saying where you're like 620 621 622 623 and it kind of just goes like this in anthem you're going straight up and then boom you are you are hitting a dead wall and you're hitting a point with your javelin where there's only specific legendaries specifically rolled that are going to take you kind of just over top of that wall yeah. and that's I the problem mind, i don't mind playing with lady luck but at the yeah. same time i don't so but at the same time i take my my 200 dollars and I put it on the craps table, I don't take my $200 and feed it into a one-armed bandit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It feels like, like it feels like I'm feeding a one-armed bandit when I should be playing it too. Yeah, like... like where I know the odds. Like, Lady Luck has to put out every once in a while. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're all, like, early access guys. Like, we all played during the initial EA premiere early access. And that's, yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah, like, we, we have been, we have been, like, day one VIP demo... Day minus Pl 14. Players. Actually, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. EA right? Premier so, like, Series. Well, know. awesome. Yeah, so we know, right? I mean, it's just... And and by the way, it's way better now than it was before. Right? Oh. Like, they, ha they have been making improvements. Yeah. But they're yeah. not... They, they can't possibly know that they're done yet. They have to continue. If they don't continue pr providing a level of progression, they will have re hemorrhage more and more players. Um... And eventually, they're going to have to just turn the fountain on to get them back. So, anyways, it, it's going to be interesting. But I think overall, um, 1.04 should be a really good litmus test for us as a community uh, to understand if yeah. that'll really give us the indication of whether or not Bioware gets it or not. I think if so they, too. I, I, th I think 1.0.4 is yeah. It's 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 going to be. I don't want to say this is this is a make or break a patch. But it is, it is definitely a patch that will let the community and those um, that have left the game, specifically those of the, have, that have left the game, are going to be watching very intently with yeah. this patch. And those of us that are still here, that are still here and are still around and still believe in this game, it's gonna it's gonna be our kind of you know bridge, you know whether our, whether our bridge crumbles or whether our bridge holds together. Yeah. type of situation right le legendary missions are a big part of that I, okay. i'm really hoping that they're going to be very rewarding and i hope that they jack up the the uh the loot drop pool on those and if they I do hope so then then we could have something that'll at least sate us until we get to that sort of next tier of content so yeah yeah i think um i think we've got a lot on the horizon i think that they've done a lot in terms of uh, with this patch potentially and again until we see the patch notes we can't really know for sure but I'm very hopeful for those 13 pages long on Word that 
we're going to get some gear changes, which I think are going to really help open up some of the game. Like yeah. Fixing inscriptions is going to be a really big deal because you won't oh. have to have a perfect legendary. Huge. You will finally once again be able to use a masterwork that has an absurd role on it, and it will do more damage yeah. than your over. Your yeah, over a legendary. And I, th I think, yeah. again, that is going to make for some very interesting um, build dynamics, too. Um, mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's gear score may not be everything. That we talk about, you know, gear, gear score, gear score, gear score. Yeah. Uh, with, with these inscriptions, gear score may not be the end all be all. And by the way, it was like that for patch 1.02. Exactly. 1.03 was where it broke everything when they introduced the new scaling, where gear score suddenly became the most important thing. So I'm, I'm anxious to see if 1.04 brings us back to center. And if it does, then it'll, it'll go a long way towards balancing the game again, I think. Yeah, I hope so too. Yep, yeah. and, and I mean, I mean, we know with every patch in this type of a game, though, we're going to see an influx of players. They're going to play through it. They're going to assess it. Um, so if you're an, an anthem streamer like myself, get ready for an influx of people that are either going to love or hate this patch, and they will yeah. definitely come into your channel we'll as, you know as, as, as we've seen this week, and they will freaking let you know about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, is there uh, is there anything else? From the chat here, anybody else that wants to ask any questions, drop them in now. Anybody, anything else that anybody wants to go through here, we'll open it up to a bit of a uh, an open Q and A for anybody that's watching. Thank you for the the follow, by the way, Brian uh, Brian Cardi, appreciate that. I am of course loading into Anthem right now. Yeah, if there's nothing uh, specifically from anybody else, what we do is then we, we do open the rest of the broadcast here for open Q&A and discussion, and we do rock some gameplay. So all I want to say is that I want character creation to be more understandable. Absolutely. Uh, it, yeah, and you know what? I had something in my la my, during my eight-hour stream, or was it eight, my eight-hour or, or uh, a previous stream where they asked about going through the appearance section and I stopped and I went through the appearance section with them. And that can be a little bit, um, uh, a little bit, a little bit confusing for sure. With the paint and the vinyls and the armors and that kind of stuff. It's not exactly, you know, an easy process for, for a new player to get through. Yep. Agreed. Yep. I was there. Yeah. You were there. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's the stuff that we're going to have to do, right. As, as people who've been playing this game since uh, VIP demo, we are still going to see new people come into this game, and the best thing for us to do is to educate them on everything that we know, and just take it you know one step at a time. Because again, we know that some of the menus are confusing, some of the menus are hidden, some of them are not exactly the best navigated. So we have to take the time with new players. Yep. So, um, Swedley says, I uh, just watched an episode of American Gods, gets ads for American Gods, what's going on Twitch. Oh, jeez, you can count on me, voice my opinion. I want more and better components for my Ranger. I want to explore different builds. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we're going to see that in this patch. Um, uh, hopefully, they can get the Ranger to be kind of more concise, more put together. For sure. Yep. Uh, do I think elemental weapons are too good? Elemental weapons are too good? Um, no. no. Absolutely not. No? No. Ooh. I think it's really important that they are good. No, yeah. I think that they're really important. I mean, based on the gameplay, I hate the instructions as they are very vague. Yeah, they are for sure. They're very, very vague. I completely agree. All right, let's uh, load up.